I'll tell you when I met her. It was the public memorial service, the fifth service I had attended in as many days. I was so exhausted and had become so numb, I couldn't even cry any longer. I just wanted this to all be over. After the service was over, we as family members were taken through the tunnels behind the stage so we didn't have to deal with the media. We were taken into a back room where they had food and drinks waiting for us. I asked someone, is that her? Is that the pilot's fiance who was standing at the edge of the room? Yes, they replied. And I immediately walked over and took her hand and led her out into the hallways, away from everyone else. I needed to talk to her with no one around. I needed her to know that whatever happens from here, that I don't blame her because it was her fiance that was the pilot, and that I took comfort in knowing that my husband didn't go alone. They were all together. We both sat there and cried. I later found out that she thought I was mad at her and was going to kick her ass because it was her fiance that was the pilot that evening. She was partly right. I did want to kick someone's ass. I was alone. Even in the midst of so many family and friends taking care of me and my girls, I was alone. No expert showed up who could figure out what to do with a stack of papers I needed to fill out. No one was there to show me how to plan a funeral. No one was there to say, here is how to get the support you need. No one was there who had ever been through this before. And I was mad about that. I'm still mad about that. We see each other every month. Either she comes up or I go down. We talk on the phone every day. And on the six-month anniversary, we held hands, slowly making our way through the tall grasses of the ditch till we were along the fence line of the field where it happened. We held hands even tighter as we made our way out onto the field to the spot where the aircraft hit. As we stood there, looking over the field, my whole body turned cold, a numbing cold unlike anything I'd ever felt. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't even move. There, strewn amongst the corn that wouldn't even grow, were parts. Parts of the helicopter that my husband was in left laying in a field like abandoned trash. And there we sat, together, picking up the pieces.